Hello and welcome to match week five of the 2013 S League season. It's Haugang United once again here at the Jalan Besar Stadium with Tanjung Paga United. Thanks, guys. As you know, the setting is the Jalan Besar Stadium with the AstroTurf pitch as the seams are just about set to walk out onto the field of play. As mentioned, we've managed to see Haugang the last few weeks on Friday football. Can they actually turn a defeat, a draw into victory today? Well, it's Tanjung Paga, well, they need to get back to winning ways to stay on the tails of Tampanese Rovers and Alberex Nigata, who are top of the table. It's going to be an interesting one, that is for sure. That much we do know. And joining me in the commentary position is Raj Kumar from 938 Live. Raj, you want to see a little bit more from Haugang as well, don't you? And you want to see Tanjong Paga get back to winning ways. How's this game going to pan out? Well, Paul, I think, uh, I mean, having, I mean, we, we know that Hokang United, they, they've played the last two games here at the Jalan Besar Stadium. It's, uh, they've, only, they've only collected one point. Uh, they, I think they have the dubious distinction of being the only club this season that has not played at the home stadium, uh, which is at uh, Hokang Stadium, because they've, uh, this is their third straight match uh, at the Jalan Besar Stadium. They did play here against uh, the Courts Young Lions in the opening match, and that ended up in a win. But, uh, what Alex Weaver, when we spoke to him uh, just before the game, he says they are looking to really get back to the Hogang Stadium in front of the home fans. And I think uh, the fact that they've not won in the last two games, I think tonight they really stand a good chance of beating Tanjong Paga United based on the fact that the Jaguars have not been performing in the last two matches. Well, that one's going to be interesting to see, but it's a Hogang United side put out by Alex Weaver. This is two changes. We heard about Mamadou Diallo, who's out injured. Firstly, Jafar makes way as well. Jeremy Chang comes back into the starting lineup and will take up a fullback position. And in comes Jerome Baker. It's going to be interesting to see how he is going to go. And don't be surprised if Jerome pushes a little bit further forwards. And it does say 4 4 2 there, but he, speaking to Alex before, he wants them very, very fluid and he wants a three pronged attack if possible. And he wants his players to be able to play in all positions. That's right, Jerome Baker from Canada. He's back in his first game since uh, the first match against the Courts Young Lions. And uh, he could not feature in the last three games due to a suspected hamstring injury. But here's the lineup for the Jaguars. Two changes made as well by Patrick Valley, of course, of Etoile fame. Zaid Ahmad comes in, as does Hafi Snor. Out goes Vikraman and Hanafi Saleh. This one's a little bit more tried and trusted we know that the danger men are the strikers with Monsef Zerka and Ben Ahmed both the two strikers up front but coming from deep will be Ramdani and those two particularly Ramdani and Zerka know where the back of the net is there is the Moroccan international 12 caps one of the marquee players here in this year's S League four goals so far this season played in the French first division also had a spell over in America with the New England Revolution, so knows what it's like at all levels of the game and has been a real asset to the club so far this year. There's Jerome Baker, it's going to be interesting to see how he does today in his first game. If, sorry, that's Thomas Beatty from the middle of the park wanting to make sure that the passing game that Alex Weaver wants to employ, that's going to be important as well, isn't it, Raj? That's right, I mean, Thomas Beatty and uh, Liam Shorten, a lot is expected of these two foreign signings because uh, the last uh, three games they've not really uh, actually showed their true potential but uh, the coach Alex Weaver says you just have to give them a bit more time and they will deliver when it when it matters the most straight away you can see something that we haven't seen for a long time Patrick Valley asking his team to kick the ball straight out of play <laughs> and to squeeze in so I think the last time we saw a set play from a kickoff was Woodlands Wellington many many years ago <laughs> You can see they wanted to press straight from the offset. Interesting tactics. 
that's for sure, as we hear the Haugang faithful get in behind their team as usual. I can them hear them through our headphones up in the commentary <laughs> position. There's the long throw, and there is a nice little turn as well from Baker. Helps it forwards, was looking for the big man shot up front. The loose ball picked up by Jeremy Chang. That's a poor touch from him. A committed challenge, though, from Azar Ahmed. Here is Beatty. Can he get the ball rolling and get this Haugang side ticking from the middle of the park? Sankir just rolls it into Azar. Jimmy Chang just helps that one on first time. There is Liam Shotton just trying to fight and battle for the ball. Loses out though. Edison in goal has to put his foot all the way through it. To messing around the 23 year old in goal. Jeremy Chang has seen a lot of the ball going on this near side. Decides to try and go cross field, and that touch is just a little bit too far. You can see exactly what. His eye call was trying to do. Well, hopefully this particular match will see more attacking options from both teams. I mean, considering that uh, we have, we do have a lively crowd, as you mentioned, and it won't end up uh, goalless or a one-nil win, as opposed <laughs> to what we saw in the last uh, two games at the uh, Jalan Besar Stadium. Don't jinx it yet, guys. <laughs> Let's just wait and see what happens in this first half. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is the beauty of the game of football. Anything can happen at any given time. I mean, a win for Hogang United will see them go from, what, seventh place all the way up to third position. They'll jump to eight points and they'll lead, uh, they'll lead uh, Tanjung Paga oh, by... Six, six to third, oh, it puts Six them. to third, yeah. OK, OK. Um, but, a, but a win for the Jaguars will see them maintain their third place, but close the gap to the leaders, Elbrecht Nagata, to just five points. That's how important it is as well, because then we would just be two points behind Tampanese Rovers as well. Great play, real chance here! What a block that was. Ben Ahmed coming across and having to put that challenge in. Danger's not clear yet, Jeremy Chang with a great ball in, the volley! Went back across goal, as Zaykor it was with the spectacular, should really have hit the target, but this is a very, very bright start from Haugang. That's right. I mean, as the icon with that acrobatic kick and uh, Jeremy Chung once again, he's seen a lot of uh, the ball action in the first uh, three minutes. Uh, it's just surprising that Jeremy missed. Uh, I think uh, he was out for the last game. Not a million miles away. That was a real opportunity. It has to be said. Flicked on. Here he is, Baker. First little look at the Canadian. Still a youngster. Looks to keep possession, that's exactly what he does. They're looking a lot more comfortable than when I saw them two weeks ago, Haugang. A lot more confident. Baker just drops into a good area and throws it out wide. Fazli Hassan on the overlap, tries to get the cross in, and it's blocked by Ahmad Latif. And we did talk about uh, Ahmad Latif at, uh, just before the game, because, uh, you know, seeing Ahmad Latif 33 and he's playing as a right back. Uh, I think we've seen him more or less play in the striker's position or maybe on the right wing, but today, surprisingly, he's uh, in the right back position. I can I can remember playing against him all those years ago, <laughs> and he was the liveliest little thing that you've ever played against. Yeah, he yeah. was such a good, good, solid pro. Of course, he has had his little issues off the field, but those are personal, so we won't pry into them. But last year as well, I've seen him drop into the right back position for Tampanese Rovers just to try and shore things up late in games. And, of course, Tampanese did go on to win the title last year, so yeah. who are it, we it, to complain? Well, it, it takes a special coach to manage uh, a special player. I mean, we see Fundy handled him when uh, he was playing with the SEA Warriors for a number of seasons. Good, strong challenge coming in there from Thomas Beatty. The striker's not really getting into it at the moment for Tanjong Paga. All the players been with Haugang. Fighting and battling on that far side, Ramdani looks to get the cross in, wins the free kick by the looks of it though, just right on the baseline. Interesting story about Ramdani, fascinating, he was called up to the 2004 Olympic qualifiers 
for Algeria. And when he arrived, the officials had realised that he was too old and got sent back. So <laughs> was called up to the national team, but it was just a little bit too old to play. So 31-year-old <laughs> hasn't let that affect his career. Here he is on the ball, and he's going to absolutely fist this in because he's having a bit of a run up here. Oh, he's pulled it back to the edge of the box. Nasrath just couldn't bring that under control. Neither could Hafiz Nor. It's another bite of the cherry, though. Looks to deliver. It's blocked down, and it's just deflected off Ramdani, so it's going to be a try in. I think Ram Ram Dhani. Sorry, I think Ramdani should have done just just chip the ball right into the box and try and you know hope for it. One of his teammates to actually hit the ball in, as opposed to the short pass to Ashraf, which has now, which uh, didn't really amount to anything. As we can see, Tanjan Paga pushing in again, trying to keep everything tight and condensed. Ahmad Latif wins the header, just nods it down to Hafiz Noor. Nice, cool, calm and collected there in defence from Sakir. Just the final pass let him down. Sidestepped a couple of challenges there. Nice play, very good play from Faisal Amir. Jeremy Chang looks to expose Tanjong Paga down the right hand flat, steps inside, tries a little reverse pass looking for Baker. Baker gives it back to Chang. Chang tries to help it forwards, but again, very, very tight areas, it has to be said. I think the number seven has done relatively well. I mean, uh, we've seen him already actually create a chance for his teammate Azi Aikot to score. He almost did a, a defense splitting pass just a few seconds ago, and now he's got the ball back again. Oh, that looked a little bit naughty. A high foot there. That was high from Cesare Sale. A risque challenge, it has to be said. The referee handling it very, very well. But look, the foot's right up, and oh dear. Those are the ones that are leg breakers. This is not a good challenge at all. He's over the top of the ball and a very, very lucky boy just to have a verbal warning. That's right. I'm surprised that, uh, that the referee Ahmad Kerja has not even uh, given him a yellow card. That was almost a, a two-footer challenge. Almost. But Jeremy Chung again with the ball right now. Let's see if he is going to be the man to deliver. It does look as though it's going to be Azar that will drop this one in, though. It is Azar. Tries to hit the penalty spot, but hits the first man. BT brings it down. Looks his head, though. Ben Ahmed comes forwards. Just threads it wide. And the red and white shirts are breaking quickly. Ahmad Latif helps it back down the line. Can they get the cross in? Another strong challenge. Play allowed to continue. Shotton does well to hold it up in, he has got two against two forwards, he's rolled it in and he's looking for the pace of Baker. Good solid defending though. Zaid chasing all the way back, puts in a great challenge. And now we have the first corner of the match. Oh, well, we know that Shotton is a big lad. And we've already seen that the Zaycourt can get off the floor if he's needed. Baker's a big boy as well, BT is, so there is height here for Haugang if they put in the right delivery. We're just under 10 minutes gone. Still 0-0, no -nil, but an opportunity here to deliver some quality into the box. It's fired into that six-yard area and it's headed straight back out. Another chance to deliver. All the shirts have stayed forward. And, well, it's not the best header that we'll ever see from Jerome Baker. He got that one totally wrong, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> was looking to try and glance or flick it on, but instead it's come off the top of his head and gone out for a goal kick. Yeah, a, a pity for the Canadian number nine, but I think it's still very early in the game. I think we can probably expect a lot more from uh, Jerome Baker. Edison gets us underway again, launches that ball long. Zerka there showing, even though he's a marquee player, he's not afraid to go and close down. Great commitment from him to chase down what looked like a lost cause. Almost came away with the ball as well. Yep, in the opening 10 minutes, however, we've not actually real, had the real chance to 
mention his name because uh, all the players have been more or less confined uh, in the centre. Nasri helps it up the line, shot and heads it inside. Zali takes it down and well, he got his pocket pick there by Azar Saladin and the referee thought that that was a foul, so the foul has been awarded. There is Patrick Belli, of course, took Etoile to the title a couple of seasons ago and has come back now to try and help Panjom Pagar and really, really put them on the map at the start of this season, but he knows this little blip will have to turn at some stage and will be looking to try and instill that in his players. Ahmad Latif just steads that one forwards. Hafi Snor with a little bit of time and space. Only one to aim for in the middle, and that was Zerka. It's overplayed, so easily dealt with by Jeremy Chang, who's looking for options. Just tucks it up the line, Shotton. Controls it with the outside of the foot, just tries to hold off the challenges. Loses out in the end. Alex Weaver just shrugs his shoulders right in front of Shotton and says, what's going on? Zerka just looking to be a little bit too precise there with the passes as I caught looks to break forwards three shirts in advance of him with the purple white and orange on Baker looks for the give and go shot and does well on that occasion just to hold up the ball here's Baker again he doesn't have too many options great footwork great ball in free header and it is as simple as that that is a great goal and a stunning celebration to boot as I caught with the acrobatic, the acrobatics earlier on the volley, but with the acro acrobatics there, with the finish, absolutely stunning goal, it has to be said, and really well worked by Baker, as I called the right place at the right time, he wasn't going to miss from there. Great start for Haugang. That's right, and a well-deserved goal. I mean, here, we were just wondering whether he had options, Jerome Baker had options, and uh, all of a sudden, you see these two guys pop up, one of them happens to be Izzy Ike, uh, Izzy Aiko, and uh, a couple of minutes ago, he did have that chance with that acrobatic kick, and now, that nice little header. Well, that's going to please Alex Weaver on the bench, that's for sure. He spoke to me earlier on and was saying how he's really happy with the way that the team is progressing and how it's going about its business. He feels that they're getting better and better with every game. So that's something that... Our gang fans can look forwards to. I think they'll they'll do much better when they get back to the home ground. I mean, uh, Alex did say that he prefers. I mean, the fact that he came from England, he prefers to play in this uh, neighbourhood stadiums where the atmosphere is so tense and the fans are so close to the stadium. So he can't wait. He can't wait to actually get back to uh, the home ground stadium and play in front of the fans. Although Alex did say that having played here three weeks in a row, it hasn't really taken too much of a toll on the players because uh, it is a well-known fact that when you play 90 minutes of professional football on this artificial turf, it can actually, you know, help ca <laughs> cause a great deal of fatigue. Yeah, yep. but it can help because it will increase your fitness levels because yep. it is a bit more sapping, it has to be said. So. Once you do get back onto grass, it is a total different surface, that's for sure. Ahmed Latif does well just to keep that one in. And then tries to dink it forwards. It's not going right for the Jaguars at the moment. Yeah, we haven't actually seen the Jaguars have uh, a shot on goal yet. And we're already almost uh, 15 minutes into the match. Oh, the firepower that they possess, they are the second leading scorers in the league at the moment. Second to Tampanese Rovers. Ramdani coming deep. Latif gives it back to Randami. Zerka holds it up, throws it out wide. Azraf has it forwards as well. This is patient from the Jaguars, it has to be said. Sazali back to Azraf. 
Good movement. Most of the turn as well. Rendani looking to get on the ball. Clips one in. It's dangerous. Help on there by Zerka. Nobody else there though. And Fedor Salim. No problems for him in goal to just easily come out and gather that one. Interesting fact that these two sides have played on six occasions before today and Tanjong Paga haven't won one. So they are somewhat of a bogey side for them as well. That's a great little touch as well as Baker gets to the byline, manages to keep it in. Has a look, does he have support? He put a quality ball in a few moments ago. Here's Shotton. Shotton just gets away from him. Long range shot fired against Zaykor and then fired wide from Faisal Amir. Thought we were going to see a nice little bit of trickery there again from Jerome Baker. Starting to impress this young man. I thought we were going to see a carbon copy of the first goal. I was just hoping for Jerome Baker to actually chip the ball uh, to Izzy who was waiting just on uh, very near to the goalpost. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, he went ahead and uh, passed on to Liam Shorten and Liam lost the ball. But uh, the Cheetahs have uh, ball possession back again. Bando with a long ball, punted forwards, looking for Baker. Baker flicks it on, shot. Doesn't have the pace, but he has the ability to hold it up. He's got quick feet, he slips though, and it looks like he's gone over. Well, that's not good, and surely, yeah, that was very sporting there. Ramdani just kicks it straight out, Zayd Ahmed wanted to play on. It looked as though he just went over on his ankle slightly there. Yeah, I think he just rolled over, yeah. Um, there. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, dear. I believe he might have twisted his ankle right there. Oh, that's the ligaments on the outside where they just get overstretched, the ankle goes right over the top. Not good at all. If he's OK to carry on, you don't want to take your boots off before the end of the game, otherwise your foot's going to swell up like a balloon. Yeah. So the question is, is how bad is that going to be? It looks as though he might be OK. But if he's limping like that, then you do worry whether or not he will make it back onto the field of play. So now going sportingly give the ball back. <laughs> Nicely held up the line there. But again, struggling to make anything work. There's a shot of uh, the whole gang Hoods. The Hoods. The best fan club for the 2012 season in the S League. And I think Liam Shorten looks like he's going to come back on. Interesting to see how he does cope. You do have to be very careful and how ginger, gingerly he is going to be moving. He looks as though he's moving okay there. It's one of the most painful things when you do go over on your ankle and you do the ligaments, it's not good at all when you stretch or tear. There he is getting in the thick of the action. He looks absolutely fine there, doesn't he? Movement's very good. Two shirts ahead of him. Shot and looks up. Great ball into the box. Just flicked away, though, from Walid Yunus. Didn't want to take any chances there. Well, after tonight's match, he actually has about four days to recover in time for the next match, which is uh, next Wednesday at the Budok Stadium between uh, Geelong International and Hogang United. You can see exactly what Baker was trying to do there, just flick it over the top and go for the next one. Actually had the chance to deliver into the box, but it didn't get there. Blocked down again, so it's a throw in for Hogang. Ahmad Latif mopping up. I don't think we say that too often, do we? Here's Baker twisting, turning, looking to create a yard for himself, lays it back. That's brilliant play from Ramdani. Did ever so well to read that. And here come the Jaguars with a little bit of time and space. It's Zerka that's dropped deep. Looks to just keep possession. Sazali 
throws it out wide into the path of Ahmad Latif, who looks up with three red and white shirts to aim for. Clips one in. Sanke clears his lines, but not far enough. Another ball into the box. Free header. Zerka, what a save. Oh, what a double save. Absolutely brilliant from Fadil Salim. The second one was a nailed on goal, but he just fisted it away. And now Haugan can hit on the counter attack. Shotton making a run forward. Shotton breaks the offside trap. He's going to get there. Shotton. One on one with a keeper, brilliant defending. Wally Dunas is back there. He's chased all the way back to put that challenge in, but real end to end stuff here. And a chance at either end for both sides. The first one should have gone in, but then at the other end, Shotton should have scored to make it 2 0. That's right, end to end stuff. Ball, I mean, uh, you saw, I, I hope uh, Wally Dunas uh, is just a knock, but uh, he's getting up for. This is the this is, uh, the, this is the one where Shotton's Shot yeah. gone through and he's just delayed a little bit too long and you can see Wally Dune is absolutely fuming. But it was the chance before that, the double save from Fadil Salim. The ball was clipped into the box from Happy Snor and a header from Zerka was going right into the corner and he's dived, he's managed to save it, but then at the second attempt fisted it away. It was an absolutely brilliant passage of play from the keeper. Good work from Tanjan Paga. Here it is, here's that first ball in, and he gets headed out by Sakir. Picked up by Hafiz Noor, he delivers Zerka with the header. But what's this for a save? One, but then two. The simplest of tappings looked as though Ismail was going to make it 1-1. That is brilliant goalkeeping. That's right, I thought Ben Ahmed would have already scored with that one, but uh, Abdul Salim again, 30 years old. He saved two penalties against... What, what's age got to Fadil, do with it? Fadil Goal, Salim. Goalkeep, goalkeepers get better with age, they're like a good red wine. I know, I know. What I, was, <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to say was uh, he saved two penalties against Brunei That's two correct. weeks ago. Yep. And this time he saved a, a potential goal, I mean, with, twice within uh, two seconds. And half his he, he saved one against Albrex as well, the game we did. He, uh, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the penalty. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it looks as though he's struggling. It was a lunging challenge to stop shot and getting a free shot on goal. That's right. I think they're showing the replay to see whether that is actually could have been, a, you know, a cause for a penalty. I don't know. Well, the ball was clearly won as this corner is drilled to the far post. A little bit of pushing. The referee said it looked as though Thomas Beatty was a little bit too keen. to the field of play. So he's going to slot back into the centre-half position. Nice little flick on there again from Zerka. Really is putting himself around. Well, that was very, very lucky from Faisal Amir, just trying to do a little nutmeg and keep the ball, but you don't do it in your own third when you can be punished. Mundani just rolls it back. sides pushing and exerting themselves very early on in that first half 25 minutes gone almost it is Haugang one Tanjong Paga nil no he's not happy Patrick Valley he knows he's gonna get a little bit more from his players as Azra picks up the loose ball switches play finds Ahmad Latif as the runners ahead of him it's Afi Snor who gets there he'll look to deliver quality it's closed down very, very quickly, though, as does Ahmad Latif. But they have to come all the way back out, says Ali Saleh. Slows it down, Walid Yunus to Zaid. Zaid just clips on forwards, challenging the back end. That's an experienced pro. Zerka knew what was going to happen there. Sakir was a little bit too keen. You see this, the strikers played for the foul, and he's done well. That's a professional act from <laughs> Zerka. Well, Shakir clearly says, look, I kept my arms behind, I went for the ball, it was a hitter. I'm surprised that you're, you're actually blowing for a free kick. Oh. And Danny 
it is who's stepping up and who will look to strike this one goal by Now 30 yards out, it is going to be Ramdani. Ramdani over the wall and into the corner and pushed away from Fadil Salim. Not far enough, Armour Latif drills and fires one in. Thomas Beattie just blocks it clear, shot and flicks it on, but it goes straight to a red and white shirt. And possession kept, Hafiz Noor plays it wide. Ahmed Latif just cuts one back inside. And Ahmed getting involved again, Ahmed Latif is there. Fires one in, it's overplayed though, but Jeremy Chang doesn't want to take any chances. Just heads it behind for a corner. But I think the gameplay of Tanjung Baga is becoming a little bit predictable. They now know that, you know, you have to mark, you have to block Hafiz No, you have to block uh, Ahmad Latif. If you can take out these two guys, the crosses will stop. And that's why we've seen Easy Aiko and and uh, Shakir Sulaiman actually blocking the two players in the last couple of minutes. Corner now for Tanjung Baga, though. Haugang leaving three players up. And they've got man for man at the back. That's a wasted corner as well. And just asking questions there and forcing Tanjon Paga to leave three players back themselves. Now I think if Tanjon Paga are really going to get back into this one, it's going to be it's going to be probably down to individual flair, finesse, and finish. Uh, hopefully from Zirko or Ramdani or even Ben Ahmed. You say hopefully, that's if you're a Tanjong Paga fan. If you're how <laughs> Haugang fan, you'll, yeah. you'll hopefully be hoping that they won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you will be meeting both coaches tomorrow with your radio show, Raj, so yeah. good luck. <laughs> and I'm sure that they'll listen and watch this back, and I'm sure that they'll have a few things to say. Well, it'll be interesting to hear Patrick Valley live on Singapore Radio for the first time, the, the enigmatic Frenchman. Well, he's got his work to do at the moment. Jeremy Chang just couldn't get on the end of that. Does well to keep it in, though. Fires it in to Baker. Great feet from him. Baker skips past one. Can he skip past two? He steps on the ball instead, but still retains possession. Clips it in with the left foot, and that's unorthodox from Walid. Just stopped the ball going into the box. Great touch and great skill there from Randani. Valley down in front of us, not happy at all with that decision. Just stating to the officials. Namad Latif getting a bit more involved down the right hand flank at the moment now. Pulls on square. Well, he thought about the volley, Ramdani, and that would have been audacious <laughs> had he tried that. But it's still Ramdani, he hangs on up into the middle of the box, but unfortunately for him, no red and white shirt there. Fadil Salim read that exceptionally well again. Having a wonderful season at the moment, isn't he? Saving penalties all over the place, pulling off great saves that we saw earlier. He's a big strong lad, this Baker. Did ever so well there just to hold off the challenge while he was being hacked. That's still possession retained by Haugang. Oh, that was... Well, I heard that from up here, but no foul given. Nasraf has an opportunity to break out from the back with it. Keeps possession, Ramdani just wants to be on the ball all the time. Zerka does as well, which is why he, he's getting frustrated. He's having to drop a little bit deeper to get on the ball. And that's the problem that Tanjan Pagar are having here at the moment. Fair play to Haugang for pushing and squeezing and keeping it tight. Here's Zerka again. Played out wide to Hafiz Noor. He's going to look to get his cross on. But can't, but the whistle has gone. Challenger judge to have been a little bit too hefty there on Fazli Hassan. Hafiz now doing well there to earn that free kick in a rather dangerous position. And the Jaguars, if they can actually deliver a nice little cross into the box, this game is going to be all square. If they get on the end of it and put it in the back of the net. Yep. <laughs> you well, could. you've asked for goals, then they're coming. We've had one already this half, which is a promising start, it has to be said. 
Just three red and white shirts inside the box, two out. Fired in. Um, lucky there. You could see going for the header was Ramdani. As it was, the it didn't look as though there was enough attacking prowess there. This is where they need to be brave, Tanjong Paga, because again, Haugang are leaving three players up the field of play. So that means there's less red and white shirts in the box. Trent, even Walid Yunis has come up. Fired in, just fisted away, and a chance here for the shot to be drilled back in by Hafi Snor. No quality on that strike, though, that was the problem. Always leaning back, which means the ball's always going to go high. Not the most convincing from Fadil Salim on that occasion. We know this guy, Hafiz Snow, can actually score. He did score a brilliant goal in that opening match against uh, Palace de Khalsa. That 3 1 win. That was, that was a wonder goal. Yeah. He'll never do that again in his life. <laughs> uh, honestly, I've spoken but... to a lot of people in <laughs> Singapore football and I saw the goal and it was one of the most magnificent strikes you will ever, ever, ever see. Yeah. And to repeat something like that, yeah, it, it doesn't happen. I, I can tell you from experience, it doesn't happen often. And until now, it's I think it's still uh, the best goal of the season so far. In well, the, the first five weeks. I, I, I'm telling you now, that's probably going to be goal of the season in the very first live televised game that we had here. That's what it's going to be because it was quite simply stunning. It really was an absolute belt at. Yeah. I was watching it just now again for a couple of uh, replays and he didn't actually touch the ball. He let the ball bounce twice and then just whacked it. They've got to defend here though. Long range shot just looking to catch out Hedison. Well, you could see what the intent was from Azar Saruddin. He's been watching the mannerisms because Hedison likes to come out and talk and shout at his players and maybe just loses half a second of concentration, which is why Azar tried that one. I think Azar was trying to float the cross to the players. I don't think he was actually going for goal, but uh, somehow he misjudged the power of uh, the, his kick. I think that was a little bit too flat for it to be across because it, it was more central. And if he was going to hang one up, it would have lofted one. Right. But interesting, though. Mm. I just thought he saw the keeper. Sometimes Obviously, players, yeah, yeah. Sometimes see the keeper, and it, in, in commentary terms and in playing terms, it's called cheating, where they take half a yard or half a step, where they think the ball's going to go. Yeah. And they anticipate the better ball. They try to anticipate where the ball's going, and then at the very last second, bang, it's changed, and it's a goal. And, and we've seen that many, many times before. Chance here though for Azraf. Great block and a great challenge coming in though. I can really have stood up and been counted here. That's a little bit of a mistake from Azraf. Is I call who's been a little bit quiet since scoring that goal. Once the free kick, not given. It's because the Jaguars, I think they've stepped up their game the last uh, five minutes. Well, they've had to to get back into it. That's for sure. Here's shoulder to shoulder. Well, the two number 12s clashing. Zerka and Faisal Amir in a little handshake as well, which is always nice to see. Shotton seems to have shaken off that little ankle injury. A little bit of time and space here for Zaiko. Zaiko does well, goes past one. Fired into the crowd. You know one thing with Zaid Ahmed is he's a committed player and he won't back down. Former Tampanese defender. Two years ago, it's in interesting to see Izzy Aiko is now playing on the right while Jerome Baker has switched uh, to the left. Oh, now he's come towards uh, the center. Jeremy Chang wants in a little bit more support. It looks as though Shotton's is going to be the target man in the box, but they've got to get there first. So Baker holds this up. A little layoff from him. That's a poor ball. Easily picked up though. By Ben Ahmed. Minisan clips that one forwards. There's Thomas Beatty looking to try and mop things up. If he's not with the loose ball. Azraf just plays it wide. Gets it back, has options ahead of him. 
Keeps the ball, keeps possession, Ramdani. Just trying to be a little bit too precise with the pass there, but the loose ball has fallen to Ben Ahmed. Ramdani lays it off. Hafiz Noor. Told you. <laughs> we'll get another one like that this season. <laughs> keep trying. I think Hafiz Noor would do well to stay on the flanks and try and deliver the, the crosses into the box to his fellow players. I think he's really been effective in that particular department, playing down uh, the right flank. It was a good, important touch in the end from Ansar Saduddin. Needed to get the control right on that one. Touch from Jeremy Chang has options ahead of him. Poor ball forwards, though. He was looking for the run of Zaiko. Couldn't find him. <laughs> Still hustling for the ball outside. I think uh, so far in the first 36 minutes, I think for me the two best players would be probably probably be uh, Jeremy Chang and Jerome Baker. They've done a great deal of running, great understanding between these two. He's on the team with time and space. Tries to flip that one forwards. Good defending though. Ashley Hassan was in the right position. There he is again. He just helps it forwards. Alex Weaver screaming at his defenders to get up and get out. Zahid looks to keep possession with Walid Yunis. Slows things down, waits for the support, Cezali Saleh. And again, long-range shot from Hafiz Noor. It was going a million miles wide until he hit the foot of Ben Ahmed. He's getting frustrated now, Hafiz Noor. Wasn't the best shot that we would ever see. You know, that is, that's his third shot on goal, but uh, to no avail. Well, that was like the other two. It was going nowhere near the goal. Let's be honest about yep, that. Yep. So sometimes, as players, you have to get back to basics. And like you said, and you spot on, Raj. Get out wide, get your crosses in, get that confidence back, and then come and try another shot. BT clips on forwards, looks into the channels. As Zaykor is the man who's chasing down and gets there. Has shot in the box. The poor pass, but a real chance here. Baker from 25 yards, wants it on the right foot, tried to pick his spot. Wallet Yunus going ballistic at a couple of his defenders, but not defending properly. And Baker it's... took just a little bit too long there, didn't he? That's right, and it's now gone out for a corner at least. But I think that initial pass to Azar, I think that was a mistake, uh, because Azar was uh, a couple of seconds too late. But thankfully, Jerome Baker picked up the ball. Like you said, while it in intercepted and now it's gone off for a corner. It looked as though it was a first-time shot. It had first-time shot written all over it, as it is the corners. Fired into that six-yard box and a little bit of a melee, but play continues. They managed to clear their lines. The loose ball picked up by Faisal. There was a poor ball into the box by Azza. Not the best clearance in the world. Jeremy Chang gets there yet again. Ooh. He pulled out, you could see that, they, were, they knew exactly what was happening there. That shows you how committed Azraf was, and Jeremy just pulling out, Jeremy Chang, not wanting to go over the top. Showing a little bit of composure there. 25 year old. Oh, and the team goes sliding in. I think that's a yellow card. Uh, uh, right. We're lucky in the fact that we get no? to see this again. It's the, the linesman on the far side is the one that flagged for this. The referee right. didn't give it, so. 
He's on the floor, his feet aren't up, you know, and he has tanked the ball, but it's a little bit reckless and dangerous, so maybe just getting away with the free kick there, Ahmad Latif. And Latif did shout, ball, Allah, ball, Allah, which is ball. I went for the ball, that's what he shouted, that's what he said. I've been here for a while, I don't want Bola. I think I think that's about the extent of my Malay, but that's about <laughs> it, Raj. <laughs> he, I mean, he was uh, screaming at the referee that yeah. I went for the ball. <laughs> I, think that, I think most players do that when they put a challenge in like that. Bola, la. <laughs> Play continues then with just four minutes to go in the first half. It's the Great Eastern Yo's S League 2013. It's 1-0 in favour of Hagang United, courtesy of an Azaikor goal after just 13 minutes. We're almost at half-time. Tanjong Pagat pick up the loose ball, play it forwards. Ooh, sloppy, a little bit sloppy there from Saikir, but he does well to get himself back and clear his lines, it's a lovely ball in forwards as well to Baker, Baker does well to turn still Baker, Baker threads it wide here's Shotton Shotton just miscontrols it, clips one in, was it deflected? No, it's going to be a goal kick So Raj, we're coming up to the end of the first half what's your take on the game so far well i think it's a it's been a very entertaining affair i mean uh, this has been hogan's uh, best 45 minutes uh, that we've seen in the last three in, in, in the three live games so far and they thoroughly deserve the lead but uh, the jaguars have been uh, a tad too disappointing considering uh, the, the amount of talented players that they have let's see uh, what the second half uh, holds for us well it's going to be very very interesting there's still a couple of minutes left here and of course anything could happen Challenge comes in, BT just mops things up. Ahmed Latif does exactly the same. So a touch scrappy in the last few moments. Edison looks to try and play out from the back. It's just a little bit too long and it does look as though Tanjong Paga have slightly lost their way a little bit here over the last couple of matches. They need to get back to winning ways and the way that they started the season. Nice ball play forwards, Ben Ahmed. Here he is again, getting the ball back, has a little bit of time and space, finds Azraf, who's out wide. Azraf looks to get round the outside of Jeremy Chang. Up and a real chance here. He's deflected, that's gone in. That's an own goal. That's going to go down as a sack here, own goal. Hafiz Noor had drilled the ball back into the goal area. It's taken a real wicked deflection from Saikir Sulaiman. It's going to be an own goal, that's for sure. But just before half-time, Tanjong Paga look like they're going to get themselves out of jail. Here's the ball just hung up at the back. Happy snore. I mean, that's going wide. The little header from Saikir Salaiman. He was just trying to head it away from goal. In the end, he's flicked it into his own net. Heartbreak for Haugeng. Right on the stroke of half time. But that is good for Tanjong Paga. So Saikir Salaiman will be credited with that because it did look as though Hafi Snor's shot was going away from the target and it just got deflected and that's heartbreak for Haugang as I mentioned but it's great news for Tanjong Paga they have scored right on the stroke of half time which will mean that Patrick Valley and his confirmation and his team talk will be completely different to how it was going to be just a few moments ago So the board has gone up, there will be one minute of time added on at the end of the first 45 minutes. And a corner for Haugang. There's a little bit of pushing and shoving going on in the box, so... 
Referee not happy at all here with a couple of the players. Looks like it's BT and it's Ben Ahmed, who's just been told to calm themselves down. Fired into the six-yard area, touch handball, Sutton, handball, Sutton, even though he hit the bar. Real, real chance, though. Just wonder why he didn't try and strike it first time. He tried to bring it down, and there it is, you can see, clearly hitting his hand. And frustration for Liam Sutton. Well, he should have really done a little bit better there. And the half-time whistle is imminent. There it is. The one minute has been added on. But it's a first half that started very, very interestingly. It all started when Haugang kept pushing forwards and Robert Azaikor scored after 13 minutes to give Haugang the lead. And they were looking to push forwards and create more opportunities. But an own goal from Saikir Suleiman with just a minute before half-time means it's a bit of heartbreak for Haugang but they are going to have to do their work and make sure that everything is right at half-time. We're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have our half-time show. As the score at the Jalambasar Stadium is Haugang 1, Tanjong Paga 1. Very warm welcome back to the Great Eastern Yo's S League 2013. It's been a, an interesting encounter, the first half. It currently stands at 1 1. The first goal scored in the 13th minute by the number 20 that you can see there, Robert Izaiko. Header that came from a cross that was hung up lovely and nicely by Jerome Baker. A simple header just cushioned back into the far corner of the goal of Hederson. There is Hafiz Noor, who didn't really have his shooting boots on today after scoring a stunner in the opening game, but it was his deflected shot that came off Saika Suleiman. The deflected header went into the back of the net right on the stroke of half-time, which means that we're all square here with both sides have everything to play for. It is going to be... Gang United that will get us underway in the purple strip, kicking from right to left. And, well, we have to say we've had a little sprint on here because Raj Kumar from 938 Live has managed to make his way up and back to the commentary position. Some interesting thoughts there, Raj, with you, Kelly, and Shazad about the first half and where it went. Where do you see the second half going? Well, I hope uh, Tanjung Paga actually really make a real impact in the second 45 minutes uh, because I did say during the halftime uh, segment that I don't think they actually deserve to have scored that goal and to actually have equalised. So I hope they prove me wrong and uh, hopefully the Jaguars can rely on the foreign imports and uh, make a real match of this one. That is Haugang who have the ball. Fasli Hassan just overplays that one. Headed down and it's a little bit scrappy at the start of the second half. It looked like a handball. Yep, the referee spotting that one. Bit of miscommunication there with Faisal Amir and Thomas Beatty. Taken quickly, though, by Tanjan Paga. Ahmad Latif threads that ball forwards. And Happy Snor just couldn't control that, so that's going to be a throw for Haugang. And the referee has had a pretty decent game so far. I mean, uh, no yellow cards, no real uh, issues to deal with, uh, you know, off the ball, is in. There, there hasn't been any ugly uh, incidents on the ball. Well, players know and they react, so you can normally gauge from what the players are thinking when you're out there on the field of play. Andani looks for a little give and go. Jeremy Chang back there, and I'll oh, just have to poke that one to safety and just flick forwards from Ajiz Ais. Oh, KG opening 90 seconds of this second half. in there and just headed away, Hasri manages to find Baker, Baker launches one long forwards but that's going to be easy pickings for Wally Yunis and Hedison in goal will look to try and play out from the back Hamdani plays it forwards 
Azraf with a layoff. Looks incredibly hard, does Azraf Rashid all over the pitch. Puts his challenges in and does all the dirty work which wingers don't like to do, which is tracking back to make sure that they mark men and make it difficult for the fullbacks on the overlap as well. And the Jaguars so far, in the first two minutes, they're trying to keep the ball, retain the possession. They're trying to draw out uh, the Hogan strikers. Ahmad Latif has a little bit of time and space. Skips past one challenge, does well to keep it. Ben Ahmad back to Ahmad Latif, who fires one into the box. It's just a little bit of a stretch for Zerka. Couldn't bring that under control. Zali Sale picks up the loose ball. Here's Azraf again. He in turn just clips one in and he's just blocked away by Fazli Hassan. I have to say that a point here wouldn't be the worst result for either side, but not the best one, that much we do know. What well, we're seeing a yellow card here. Well, that's interesting. I don't know why that's been given, but it's the first yellow card and he's gone to Fazli Hassan. Really see anything wrong with that? Maybe there was a little bit of verbals going on, which is what he's been booked for. But he brought the ball clear. We didn't see any malice with another player out there. There was an interesting call by the referee. We just said he had a a rather quiet first 45, and now within three minutes, uh, we've seen uh, the Hogan player being booked. It must have been dissent. That's all you can think of as a long line shot fired in by Ismail. Ben Ahmed just couldn't hit the target, so he's the first player to go into the book. It is again on the ball. Looks to try and keep possession. That's a lovely little turn in the middle of the park from Azar Saruddin. Keeps possession, just flicks it wide. Jeremy Chang is going on the overlap. Zaykor decides to try from range. Seems that nobody's got their shooting boots on at the moment. There is confirmation that Hasli Hassan received the yellow card. That, of course, though, was Robert Zaykor, who whose shot just went high and wide. the tackle on Latif that he got the yellow card for so an interesting one nonetheless and what's interesting is uh, the referee did not even stop the game for that infringement he allowed the uh, ball to carry on we don't mind that though because if there's an advantage to be played the officials do like to do that now Saruddin, a little bit of time and space. Nice touch there from Faisal. He tries to play forwards. They want the handball, not given. And Ahmed. Well, I wonder whether the goalkeeper Henderson should have actually, you know, gone for a for a kick instead, as opposed to passing uh, to the nearby defender. Shot and wins the corner. Obviously under instruction from the officials, there's, there's a little tangle there between Walid and Shotton. <laughs> I wonder if they're speaking in French or... Well, um, well, I, I, I don't know how good English. English, uh, <laughs> his French would be. I know that Walid speaks English quite well. <laughs> Former combat player, of course. Corner's taken short, chance to deliver into the box. It's a great ball as well, he's bounced the bubble around, he's flicked in. Henderson got it completely wrong. How about that? Well, it's pleased the coach. Alex Weaver there is pumping his fists. 
but the simplest of tap-ins, we say the simplest, he's had to use the outside of his foot to try and flick it goal by him. As Rizayas it is, the man that gets the final touch, wonderful ball played in from Azar. The keeper's made an absolute howler there because he should have come and taken it. Good pressure applied, though, from Thomas Beattie, leaving the simple tap-in for Hasri to give Haugang the 2-1 lead. Well, the goalkeeper thought that uh, he actually got the ball because uh, Thomas Beattie was, was there for the hitter. But, uh, you know, it bounced off two, two players and... Uh, Hasri Zai is the number four, scoring his first goal of the season. That's unlucky from Baker. Baker was just looking to try and play and keep possession. They lose eight again as they come forwards. to do again for Tanjan Paga and this may, you may say overplaying there's a time to try and knock it a little bit longer and there's a time to pass the ball around as Ahmed Latif helps that one forwards <laughs> Ben Ahmed with the ball in Adel Salim shows good hands there oh, he's totally focused on the ball that was going to be a little bit awkward for him as he was diving forwards to take that, but did well in the end. I think if Tanju Paga were to really get back into this one, they have to probably stop playing from the flanks because uh, the Hogan United defenders have actually marked out Latif and uh, even Hafiz Noor. Let's try and get the ball in, in the middle. Let's see the likes of, you know, Musef Zerka or... Ishmael or even Ramdani take the ball, try and drive it through the middle and have a real cracker at goal. Well, someone's going to have a real cracker goal here because the free kick has been committed, uh, you would say, to about 30, 32 yards away from the goal. Beatty's over it. You see, Zaykul wants to get involved. Azar's there as well. chat with Baker who's standing in the wall shot and stuck here at the far post he's almost done it with the eyes there as I said with him, that's not a million miles away let me tell you <laughs> he's trying to fake to go over the top of the wall in the other corner and has chained his foot direction right at the last minute and that is close Nicely done by the number eight, but I think Azar might have stood a better chance if he had tried to chip the ball over the wall and then hope for Liam Shotter to try and get onto it and score. That would really do him a, a great deal of a, a great boost to his confidence, Liam Shotter. Yet to score. Oh, well, sorry, he has scored one. He's one, scored one yeah. goal so far this season, but needs to start scoring more. Ball whipped in. It's gone over everybody. Ahmed Latif's there, picking it up right at the far post. Tries to deliver. Blocked down by Fazli Hassan. He does well to keep that in play. Here is shot. Well, Junos back there, trying to put the challenge in. Just a little nudge from him. Shoulder to shoulder. He gets oh. caught in possession. Shot does well to win that back. And then loses out. Wants the free kick, but... Time and space on the far side now for Azraf Rashid. This Noor with a little chest down. Ahmed Latif in a wide area. He receives the ball now. Has a little bit of time and space. Tucks it up the line. Ben Ahmed. Goes to get the cross in, but... Couldn't wrap his foot around it enough, so goes harmlessly behind for a goal kick. That was a wasted attempt by Ben Ahmed. I think he should have tried and pull the ball back to Amal Latif or even Hafiz Noor, who were within uh, just a couple of metres uh, from him.
As I caught, helps it forwards. Nice little step over there. Was he fouled? No, say the officials. actually hear the loud hailers in the stadium it sounds like playing the game in the Middle East or something <laughs> <laughs> and they're creating an atmosphere which is always good so like we've always said get down and support our S League you get the opportunity to go down any of your local teams go out there and watch a game doesn't stop you coming and enjoying the atmosphere it's great there's Lots of little events going in and around when the match days happen and when the games go on. Nabi Man United, your Real Madrid's, but get down here and support your local teams as well. I need your support because you ask any of the players, there's nothing better than playing in front of a crowd. And we hope there'll be a great crowd next week uh, in the live game on Friday when I believe it's Home United versus uh, Tampines. That one will be interesting as well. Great ball clipped into the box, free header! Well, once if Zerka was just leaning back there, he was already in the hole, that was the problem. Ooh. But a real opportunity there, though. You can see he's already standing rather than attacking it. If he was attacking that, that would have just ripped the back of the net off. I think the mistake was right there, the number three, Shakir Sulaiman, the Hogan defender, he failed to close in on Ben Ahmed and then allowed the Ben Ahmed to actually float in the cross. of the second half he's gone pretty quiet you have to give a little bit of credit to Patrick Valley there and his team they have stepped up the tempo a little bit but they do find themselves trailing there's a little tug from Azraf so that's going to be a free kick as I wanted to get on with it pretty quickly in the end just slows it right down oh, Jeremy Chang switches play <laughs> And there's the ring leader for the fans of Tanjung Paga with the loud healer. Wesley Hassan clips on forward, shot and involved in a little bit of a tussle with Ahmad Latif. Play continues. Guy tries to get things going down that left hand side. Forwards, happy snore tries to do exactly the same, but gets cut out. Shot and gonna go in with Walid. No, no collision there. Ahmed Latif down the line. Ben Ahmed keeps it nice and simple. Looks up, fires one into the box. A lovely little turn there from Zerka. Good defending, though. It's to be said, as we're getting very close, not allowing him the easiest of terms ever. Headed away from. Jeremy Chang, and you can hear the screams there from Fadil Salim, out, out. They want to try and push play up the other end, that's a nice touch as well from Jerome Baker. Good turn as well, fine shot, shot with a little bit of time and space to work in. And just runs straight into the man. Sancho Pagan now, it's their turn to come forward, sloppy from both sides here. Now, that actually could have been a yellow card because that was a little bit more cynical from Faisal, it has to be said. <laughs> Knew exactly what he was doing there. Watch, just runs across the back of the legs, just catches him. Once again, Amal Latif down the plate. Tries to deliver into the box, good header away now from Hasri. 
This game's starting to open up a little bit, but both teams being very, very sloppy in their play. Especially Hogan, because of the fact that they're allowing the Jaguars to actually come into this game. They're allowing the crosses to come in, and they could actually pay the price if they don't stop the crosses. Shot losing out there, which means that Tanjong Paga can break forwards, and again, another poor ball. And I'm mean, just giving it away. See, they are looking to play out from the back, but like we said earlier, there's a time and a place for that. Now you need to squeeze in, but I'm going to see. Nice touch from him. He clips one into the channel, looking for Zerka, and again, good defending from Hazri's eyes. He's done well tonight. The number four, the 25-year-old, used his upper body strength there. And he scored the second goal for Hogan United. Exactly. Zyko keeps possession. Here's Bar uh, Baker. Baker Look. tries to create a yard for himself. It comes back out, fired in, shot and can't control it. He is going to get there first, though. Has a little bit of support with Fazli Hassan. Help back inside. No one there. That's a mistake from Faisal Amir, which is going to allow Tanjong Paga to break and come forwards the other way this time. Ramdani keeps possession. Then I made Ramdani. Zerka. Black's gone up. Coming back from an offside position there was Mansif Zerka. He performed for the national team at the 2004 Olympics and the 2008 African Cup of Nations. There you can see offside just trotting back, back in. So, referee blew his whistle after the linesman had raised his flag. 25 minutes to go then. Now then, still leading by two goals to one. Up in the middle of the park under a strong, strong challenge. Baker comes away with the ball. Baker pulled the trigger. Yeah, he wasn't afraid to have a little go there. But again, how many shots are we seeing go high and wide? From, from, from that very position, we've seen a whole number of chances from Hafiz Noor. And now Jerome Baker in his uh, actually first real attempt from long range. He's great at uh, dribbling the ball. I think he's been uh, the most entertaining player as far as uh, his fancy footwork is concerned. But if Hogan United were to score a third goal, I think it's all over for Tanjung Parker. Looks as though Hogan are getting ready to make a change. And Dani, though, he's got a little bit about him. Lovely ball split in the defence. That's Raf. Gets there, Jeremy Chang puts the challenge in, that was an important one. Cleared away though by Sakir, I think it was, who was tracking back in there. In fact, no, it wasn't, it was Hasri. There you go, Jeremy Chang having a chase all the way back, put the challenge in, and again, Hasri Zayas clearing his lines so that they can get their shape back. And again, Haugang leaving three strikers upfield. Whipped in, it's a dangerous ball. Shot wins the header, launched in the air from Azar. And this is where there's a three on three situation here. And that's a great take and turn from Baker. And that will be a yellow card, no question about that. Said Ahmad will be the first Tanjong Paga player into the book. That's his third yellow card so far this season. A little bit naughty, cynical, but they were left one on one because they're trying to gamble and take that chance going forwards from the corners. Having earned his third yellow card, does it mean the, that he's going to probably miss the next match? I think that's I right, think, yep. yeah. I think it's three three yellows equals a one-game suspension. So he's going to miss uh, the clash against uh, Elbrex Nigata at the Jerome East Stadium in nine, nine, nine days from now. There's another shot coming in, but it's high and wide as a Saladin getting that one completely wrong. We are going to see a change. It is Liam shot. <laughs> is coming off. That's going to be disappointing for him. Paris Hassan is the man that comes on. 
I think we were talking about it at halftime, saying that uh, Liam Shorten hasn't had a, a really good game so far. I think it's just the lack of uh, the service from uh, his fellow players. He did suffer that little injury, but I think he more or less recovered from that ankle. And now, uh, Bo Gong on the attack. Nice play. Here is the substitute. Feroz. Feroz! What an introduction that would have been. Well, he tried to pick his corner. You've got to give a bit of credit there to Harrison. He was diving at full stretch to push that to safety. My, oh, my. What an immediate impact the substitute has had. If that had gone in, that would probably have set a, a record for the fastest goal ever scored by a substitute at uh, the Jalambasa Stadium. Just so everybody out there is aware, I've been having updated messages sent through to me. There's actually four yellow cards. So the, pe great. the people who have four yellow sent, cards. sent the messages through, thank you for updating us on the rules. Ball's whipped in, great ball in as well, but no one attacking it in a purple shirt. Hack back in towards the box. Jeremy Chang getting on the ball, and the foul committed, and he can't believe that. Ramdani thought he was away there. <laughs> He's not too pleased about it, considering the number of uh, other controversial decisions which uh, the referee have allowed the ball to, to play on. Well, then, it's taken quickly. And, of course, the big screen on the far side won't show incidents, just to make sure that nobody points to the screen. It's for the viewers out there, when we watch the replays, sometimes they don't show them. They see the goals, but if there's any little incidents, they do it at all international stadiums now, and at all the stadiums throughout Europe. They will show the game on the big screen, but if there's something that's a little bit dubious, then it will not be replayed on the master screen. It's also to not rile up the crowd. You know, you know how the crowd can, can turn hostile. Good footwork again from Baker, but it's closed down. Ramdani does ever so well to win it back. A little miscontrol there does actually work for Ben Ahmed because it now means that Ahmad Latif has a little bit of time and space. Ben Ahmed again. Back to Ahmad Latif. Give those two a ball, shall we? Because they seem to be playing with each other. Four or five passes. And now it's Ramdani's turn to get involved as well. As well to keep possession. Tazali finds Azraf. Azraf fires into the box. Well blocked by Hazri Zayas. And the boos when the Tanjan Paga players touch the ball and the cheers when Hagan United players touch the ball. I'm going to have to be patient because Zerka has laid that one off. A long-range shot fired in. Well, that was with Venom from Hafi Snor. Well, quite clearly he's gone to ground now, Fazli Hassan, and quite rightly so. Shouldn't really go to ground when they're struggling like this. Hung up, great ball to the far post. Brilliant defending, Jeremy Chang. It needed to be as well. And a couple of players not happy that the ball wasn't played out. But at the end of the day, I the think referee that, doesn't yeah. have to stop the game. They yeah. don't have to kick the ball out. You should wait until something happens and then bring it to the referee's attention. But I think the last couple of minutes, the Jaguars were all over the place. They tried from the right, they tried from the centre, they tried from the, from the left. They pulled the ball back. Now they managed to secure a corner. Let's see if they can actually make this count. Whipped in right across the face of the six-yard box, and again, Zerka just couldn't get on the end of it. Ahmed Latif oh, went to shoot, but then has elected to try and get to the byline. Crosses, it's a great ball in, and almost another own goal <laughs> from Saikir Suleiman. He was there at the near post, and wasn't a million miles away, it's got to be said. Ahmed Latif doing really, really well. Well, they could have gone all wrong for Hogang United. I mean, Saikir Suleiman has already scored two goals this season. We certainly don't want to score an own goal now and pull the game level. Well, he scored the own goal here as well, so he's three, he's three for three. the year now. <laughs> but that obviously doesn't count in the statistics. <laughs> Hagang defending stoutly. They need to. 18 minutes to go, plus a little bit of stoppage time. I 
Ashraf Rashid with the corner. Fires it in under the crossbar of Fadil Salim, so he elects to just fist it to safety. Zayed picks up the loose ball, he's just a little bit too far ahead. Jeremy Chang picks this one up. Zaiko inside, there's an opportunity here, that's a great ball, split in the defence, just overplayed a little bit, and it was the substitute, Perus Hassan, who was trying to get on the end of that, and that was just a little bit too heavy, the pass forwards, but a real opportunity, good goalkeeping from Harrison. That's right, it almost caught uh, the Tanjung Baga defence uh, flat-footed because they had pushed up with so many players up front, and like you said, the substitute almost getting his name onto the score sheet. Oh, is the Aiko has... Uh, suffered a slight injury. I don't know what that was, and from our position, it's on the far side of the field. I think that well, the ball bounced up and hit him in the midriff. Didn't look as though there was anything structurally wrong with him. He does look in discomfort. It didn't seem like it was a hard ball. Well, let's see where they're going to look at. Here we go, look. Probably took the ball into the chest. To the chest. The ball's not going to hurt you if it hits you in the chest, is it? So is he playing for time a little bit? Because there doesn't look to be too much wrong with him. It's an interesting one. Well, everybody's down here having a water break, and play's continuing here. The game has carried on, and it's been given away sloppily by Tanjong Paga. Here's Baker. Jeremy Chang looks to hang one up, looking at that far post area for Baker. Not good enough, bowled out, a little bit of time and space here for Shafi Snow. It's starting to open up for them a little bit. Walid. That's it, take the ball straight through the centre as opposed to going down to, to the flank again. Right, ball whipped in, no, and a simple header. Snooping down on the ground. That's his first of the season. Ismail Ben Ahmed makes absolutely no mistake from about five yards out. We're all square here, but the defence for Hauganga dropped off so far back that it was the simplest of headers in the end with no marking for Ben Ahmed. And a simple goal. Great ball in, though, from Ahmad Latif. Well, we said it, you know, in the last couple of minutes, we've been saying, uh, hopefully, Tanjung Pango will actually change the strategy as opposed to playing down the right flank. But this time, it's actually paid off. I think the substitute, Faris Rahman, he, Faris Hassan, he actually failed to close in on... on, uh, on the player who actually took the cross. Sorry, Ahmad sorry. Latif. That's, that's right. Didn't close down, Ahmed He didn't Latif. close him down. Yep. There was the mistake right there. There was like a three-meter gap. Well, while that's been going on, we have had another change. It is Sobri Maslan that has come on. It's Jerome Baker that's gone off. And slightly surprising because he's had an effective game. There's no question about that. He's worked his socks off. Maybe it's just a little bit of fatigue, fatigue. and tiredness. Yeah, because he hasn't been playing as regular as some of the other boys. It makes you wonder if uh, Jerome Baker had played in the last two matches against uh, Woodlands and Albrex. Maybe Hogan would have would have uh, done better than have to secure only one point in the last two matches. Come on, Latif back on the ball. It was his ball in that has led to the equaliser. There's a nice intelligent ball to the feet there of Ramdani. Cleared away. That looks as though it's Tanjong Pagger in the ascendancy. Ball fired in from Ashraf, but to no avail, Ramdani shoots again. Pedos plays it inside here, Sobri. That's just a little bit too tight, and again, that's what we talked about, overplaying a mistake there from Faisal Amir. Has put Haugang under a little bit of pressure. Jeremy Chang doesn't get that one right, headed away. Wanting the free kick was Sakir, not given. Again, hoisted in towards that far post area. Ahmad Latif, totally unmarked, hangs it back up in there. 
wanted the penalty there, thought there was a brush of the hand. <laughs> Play continues. Cheeky little back heel. play from Ahmad Latif lovely inside for Sazali that's not much better headed away by Kang and Danny picks up the loose ball a little bit of time and space here for Azar Ahmad Azraf fires one in and they want the corner it's not going to be given because a little bit of confidence now running with Ben Ahmed attack that ball trying to get over the top of it just couldn't guide it goal bound Since we had our little discussion on the yellow cards, yes, I can now tell you that it's very, very interesting that the fourth yellow, seventh, ninth, is when the suspensions occur, and then there's a fine of 500 as well for each card after that. So there you go. Wow, the fourth and the seventh and the ninth yellow card. Yeah, per season. Nice ball threaded up the line, Zerka. Looks to hang one up at the far post, and there's people attacking it. Flipped away from Fazli Hassan, it was just as well, because Happy Snort was bearing down on him. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little nudge in the back. Kick awarded. So Jeremy Chang waiting for the big guns to come forwards. Can they nick another one? We're almost into the last ten minutes. Five shirts to aim for in the box. It's beating everybody. Psyche, I just wouldn't sit down quickly enough for him, would it? Yeah, he's trying to make amends for having scored that own goal earlier in the first half. But when you see the Hogan players uh, in a set piece position, they actually have, like you said, five players in the box. On the other side, when you see the Jaguars on, uh, when they have actually have, actually have a chance, they only just feel they push up three boys into the box while the rest of the team is uh, playing defense or in midfield. I think what helps as well is the fact that Haugan do leave three players upfield as well. Here's Sobri getting to the byline. Sobri looks to pull it back, close down very, very quickly. Wally doing really well there. Nicely threaded up the line. Ahmad Latif will look to take the throw. Take quickly, Ramdani threads it forwards. If he's not, couldn't sort himself out. Wanted the free kick, not given. A little bit of pressure being applied here from Tanjan Paga. High feet from all concerned, so the referee just allows play to carry on. It's good to know that uh, Tanjan Paga have not uh, made a substitution as yet, as opposed to Hogang United have already had two substitutions. Zyko finds Sobri. As I started in a little bit of time and space, throws it forwards, Feroz. Just too flat. Again, the runners not happening on that occasion. Alex Weaver patrolling his technical area looks a little bit frustrated at the moment. And you just look at the amount of space that uh, Aman Latif had, but he just breezed through down the right flank. Mandani plays it wide. That's going to be a corner. Right, well, this is what you're talking about, about the number of red and white shirts that are in the box. But if you see what Haugang are actually doing, they're putting three players up on the halfway line. And you, we can see that from our commentary position here. Yeah. They're just 
and they're just dragging one more player back now, so just to the edge there. But it's just a question of how much you want to gamble. There's the corner count. It is in favour of Tanjong Paga. It's a little bit too high. Jeremy Chang will get there first. Flicked away by Faisal Amir. Ahmed Latif gets Whoa. that and gets caught as well. And oh, no, no card at all. Uh, Valley Good. not happy down in front of us. He's going absolutely ballistic. That was a free kick. Oh, well, there's another nasty challenge. That's a yellow card. That was a nasty one as well. As a, sorry. That's Raf no. Rashid goes into yes, the book. And it was very, very tough on Faisal Amir. That's very late. Very, very late. No intent of getting the ball either there. He's lucky that that's not red. So fresh it. Ball had already gone. Maybe a little bit of frustration with the way that the game is panning out. It's still 2-2. Six points and move them up to fourth spot behind Tanjon Paga. But they're oh, not going to happen for them because it's Pinamed who has scored his second of the game and his second of the season with an absolutely stunning strike. The outside of the right foot. Well, we did not see that coming. Literally, there was nothing going on. And then the mix up in defence, the ball forwards. No one's closing down the outside of the right foot into that far corner. It's a great strike from Ben Amin. More importantly, we were just saying what it was going to do for the points for Haugang. This is going to put Tanjong Paga closer to Tampanese and Albrecht, and that's exactly what they want. Great strike, and it's Tanjong Paga who take the lead for the first time. That's right. It's a poor defensive play by Fazli Hassan and Hasri Zayas, the two defenders. They should have just caught up with him, closed him in. In fact, they let the ball bounce and now they pay the price for it with uh, five minutes to go. And like you said, Tanjong Paga coming back twice into this game and now actually taking the lead. And now with the uh, the, the possibility of actually close, going on to secure the three points. Well, we were talking that a point would have moved. How gang the fourth and the go above Ballastair <laughs> and all of a sudden the tables have turned. Tanjong Paga will stay in third place, but they'll cement that position for at least another week with three points here. They're knocking on the doors of uh, Tampanese Rovers. If they stay on and they win this game, they'll be two points behind Tampanese and five points behind Albrecht. Well, it is Zayed who's gone to ground, and, well, he is no spring chicken anymore. Zayed, 35 years old, the oldest player on the pitch for Tanjong Paga. So Zayed will just be asked to leave the field of play on the stretcher. Great finish, it's got to be said by the 24-year-old. I mean, it's a nothing ball forward, but you've got to give a bit of credit to Zerka. He gets the little flick. No one closes him down. That is for confidence. You score a goal, your confidence is high, and as a striker, that's all you want, because then he buried that right into the back of the net to give him the lead. And it's a real pity for Fadil Salim. I mean, he's had a really... Uh... A pretty good game so far, the goalkeeper for Hogang United. And I think he had the, the ankle covered, but it was just slightly, just slightly out of his reach. Here's a substitute, it's just been made while that injury has gone on. It's Nor Hilmi that's come on, it's Faisal Amir that's gone off. In his BT. BT tries to hang it up at the far post, just flipped away by Azar Amir. There's confirmation of that change by Haugang, the last throw of the dice. With just a couple of minutes to go here now. They really have shot themselves in the foot, Haugang here. They were in a good position. And when they did create their chances, we did say, does it come back to bite them in the backside? Because they could capitulate here. Ramdani helps one into the box. And again, the man on a hat-trick. That's confidence for you. 
gets in front of his man, Ben Ahmed, trying to flick it goalbound. Looked like it was a corner, but he was a judge to have got the last touch. So a couple of minutes for Haugang to save this game. Is Jalan Basar going to be unlucky for them this season? Particularly the live Friday night football, where they've appeared the last few weeks and they are yet to win. And, well, Walid's gone down as well now. And there was absolutely nobody around him. He looked to see where the referee was and then just sat on the floor. There you go, asking for the stretcher, the referee. So Wallet just tries to break up a little bit of play, bit of bit of professionalism there. What are your thoughts, Raj, on the whole game? I mean, it's it, this is how cruel the game can be. That's right. I mean, uh, at, at halftime we did say that, you know, Tanjung Paga, if they really got a telling by the coach Patrick Valle, they they probably would come out all fired up in the second half, and they did. I think uh, the second half they clearly had uh, the majority possession of the ball. They came from. You know, twice they came back when they were down, and now they've actually scored a uh, what could possibly be uh, what could possibly be the winning goal. Unless Hong Kong United can actually come back uh, in the last uh, two minutes. Gonna be interesting to see, and we'll catch your thoughts a little bit later on in the post show with Shazad and Kelly. Pasley Hassan just keeping the ball as we enter the final minute of play. We've been told that there will be four minutes of time added on at the end of the 19. Challenges flying in. And Danny. Nazraf up the line. And Danny chasing down, looking to keep possession. Is he going to go for the corner and take the points? Fires it off the defender's legs and makes sure that it's a corner. So more time will be wasted as Vikram is the man that's coming on. Hafiz Noor is coming off. So confirmation of the change. No, it was his deflected shot at the end of the first half that led to the own goal. Big man is the man that comes on. Ramdani just looking and happy to keep it in the corner. As you can hear, there are four minutes of time added on. Selecting to go all on his own here and try and slow everything down and kill the game off. Ben Ahmed will probably want to get in the box because he's on a hat-trick, so you can feel sure that he would want to score another goal. There is free kick awarded as the clock just ticks down. That is what he's going to please coach Patrick Valley more than anything. He wants this game over and done with. It puts Tanjong Paga back on track with three points. And it'll be a big, big three points, that is for sure. to try and get back into this and try and make something happen. All bumps forwards and just a little layoff. But almost halfway through the four minutes of time added on at the end as Zaiko looks to get there. Loses out and loses out in the throwing stakes as well. Two sides will play again. Penang is next up for Haugang on Wednesday. 
Albrecht Nagata will take on Tanjon Paga. Tuesday, so that's Tuesday week they will play. So important to go into a two-week break with three points in the bag. Exactly what you want. But there is still time, and we've seen it before, particularly in the S League, where late, late goals can come. We'll drill forwards. Sobri keeps possession. Hasni Hassan wants to keep the momentum going. Sakir. Like Given away, and that's a mistake from Hazri Zayis. And the free kick awarded. Players bouncing off each other. It's going to take us to the last 60 seconds. And you do get a feeling you know what's coming here. Patrick Valley just barking his instructions to the players. down the line and into the corner oh they've played it inside Azraf tries the shot and that's going to go out for a throw in yes it is and oh, they've got to get the ball forwards quickly here time is running out too fast the seconds are ticking down for Haugan Sobri's the target, a little nudge in the back there from side play, allowed to continue, loose ball, BT gets there, back to Jeremy Chang, Chang looks forwards. Wally this time wins the header. There is the full-time whistle, so it's Tanjong Paga who have twice come from behind in today's game that will take the spoils in the Great Eastern Yo's S League 2013 campaign. What an interesting game of football we had. It all started with Haugang taking the lead with his eye court. Takir scoring an own goal just before half-time. Hasri made it 2-1 in the 53rd minute, but then it was the Ben Ahmed show. Two goals and the final goal with five minutes left to go was an absolute belter. And nothing ball play forwards, the little flick on, no one closed him down, then with the outside of the right foot, he guiled it into the far corner to give Fadil Salim absolutely no chance. So it's ended, Haugang 2, Tanjong Paga 3.